What's going, everybody? This is your boy, Pitts, from Pitts and Push Sports Talk Radio, Pitts Sports Zone. Bowie TV coming to you live tonight. Bowie State Total Access got Coach Swan in the building. How you doing, Coach? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Everyone, this is Bowie State University women's head basketball coach. Coach, if you can, tell the viewers and listeners a little bit about yourself. Um, yeah, well, again, I'm the head women's basketball coach at Bowie State University. I've been at Bowie State since 2011, started off as an assistant coach, um, became the interim head coach in 2015, was promoted. Uh, well, the interim title was removed in 2016. Um, you know, I love Bowie State University. We've had some great teams. We've been to the NCAA tournament three times. We've um, made it to Sweet 16. And we've had 421 seasons. <laughs> um, we've had a lot of success over the past couple of years, and um, there's no other place that I'd rather be than Bowie State. And one of the things, Coach, we could just give a little uh, preview or past catch up to the viewers and listeners. You know, last year we'll catch up from, you know, the CIAA game. Um, I had my reservations about a lot of things that took place, as mm -hmm. you did as well. Um, but going for one of the things that you know you you talked about at the in conference, the end of the uh, season conference at the CLW mm -hmm. tournament was about you know just growth and mm -hmm. um, you know leadership, and that has been something. Have you do you feel that a lot of those things that you uh, wanted to see going into the season? has started mm -hmm. to pan out the way you like? Yeah, most definitely. Um, I do believe that, like, our leadership is, like, top tier right now. Um, you know, the, over the past couple of years, like, we've just been stressing to the players that it doesn't have to be one leader on the court. It doesn't have to be one leader on the team. Everyone on the team can be a leader in some type of way. Everyone on the team needs to hold each other accountable, and I believe that that's what the young ladies have been doing um, this year in particular. Um, you know, so when one person is down, who's even when our captains, you know, aren't having the best day, we have others who are willing to step up to make sure that everyone is performing at their best in practice or games. Um, how many incoming freshmen do you have on your team this year? And we how have many three players? incoming freshmen. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about, so yesterday was the first uh, CIAA game. Mm -hmm. uh, all other games were out of conference. Can you take us through your thoughts of how the out of conference game prepped you guys um, to because you guys came in with the nudge of fighting, regardless of what the score looked like? Do you think some of the out of conference games kind of helped prep you guys for the beginning of the CIAA play? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we try to schedule our, our non-conference games so that prepares us for conference play and most importantly prepares for the end of the season. So um, a few lessons that we've learned early on. So our very first game, we played Mansfield. So they're actually a good team this year. They're pretty good this year. Um, I believe they're five and two right now. But last year, they only had three wins. So going into the season, our players, I believe, we went into the game playing them based off of their record last year. Wow. And we ended up losing, right? So um, that was a lesson in itself that you can't play teams off of their record. You have to go out and, you know, play every – team um you know treat every game like it's a championship you have to Absolutely. play your style of basketball every day go out and fight every day and you can't take any team for granted um another lesson that we've learned you know we we played so we played a team who had three wins last year and then we played a team who was number 20 in the country uh. and we beat them so we know where our capabilities are um i believe that game we had a good three out of four quarters <laughs> Three out of four quarters. You know, we put four quarters together. I think we'll be a really great team. Um, but we had a good three out of four quarters. So it showed that we can compete with the top teams in the country. Not in the conference, but in the country. Um, we also had a game. Oh, we just played. What was it? Goldie Beacom. We Go played Goldie Beacom last week. Um, and we were down. You know, another team I believe we went into taking for granted, played them off of their record. We were down. Um, but we ended up coming back to win. So, you know, those lessons were great for yesterday's game versus Claflin. You know, we were down 11 or 12 going into the fourth quarter. Um, and I just told them, I said, look, we've been here before. Like, you know what it takes to make a comeback. You know what you have to do. You have to step up the defensive intensity. Um, and we have to execute on offense. And they were able to go out and do so. Do you feel 
has there been any challenges that you felt from carryover from last year to this year? Um, any challenges? No, not really. Um, I think this team did a a great job of um I would say using all of our taking all of our challenges from last year and making sure that we didn't foresee those things again this year. Um so it's something that you alluded to um, at the beginning of the interview was about, you know, the 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 CIAA game, <laughs> the CIAA game last year. So one of the things that I think we've done an excellent, <laughs> we've done an excellent job of doing this year is playing through um, adversity. So when things aren't going our way, whether it's the refs or whether we have a bad quarter or so, we are able to pick ourselves up from that and recover from it and continue to play. Um, so I think that's, you know, that that was probably one of our biggest challenges last year. But we so far, we've made that correction. How how did it feel going into yesterday's game being the first CIAA game? You know, anytime you get to play in conference, mm -hmm. you know, it's a different energy, even though the, the preparation is yeah. the same. But when you talk about conference play, that's when everything really starts to matter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, it was exciting, um, especially for our players. The good thing is <laughs> we had majority returners because CIAA environment is totally different from the non-conference teams that we play. So it was it was definitely exciting going into the game. Um, and, you know, I'm just glad that we were able to, uh, you know, recover and go out and execute because, again, CIAA play, is totally different style of play than most of the teams that we have to play during um, non-conference schedule just because of location and, you know, who we can, where we can travel to and who will come to us. So it was definitely exciting to see how we competed against the CIAA team. So yesterday the game started off in favor of Claflin where mm -hmm. they jumped out to a 9-0, uh, to a 9-0 score, mm -hmm. you know, but yet the team's composure stayed the same. Can you take us through, you know, because you never called a timeout to regroup them. You actually mm. show and exemplify trust in your young ladies to mm. actually get themselves together and compose. And they end mm. up running off a 14 to 11 run. You know, mm. take us through that first quarter when things, you know, started off not in your favor. Um, You know, I think, you know, we just came out slow. Um, I, I know what our, our players are capable of, and I think the great thing about this team is the coaches trust the players and the players trust the coaches. Um, we all know what everyone is capable of doing, and it's just having that trust that, okay, now you know we're down. Now it's time to wake up, refocus, regroup, and play our style of basketball. But, you know, I never – you know, I never doubted <laughs> that the, I never thought that the score would stay have a gap the way that it did. Um, I knew that at some point we would make a run. We always talk about how basketball is a game of runs. It's more so how you're going to respond. You know, unfortunately for us yesterday, it just made that run at the beginning of the game. So we just had to do, you know, quick turnaround. Forget about it. It's over. Now you have to play the remaining 35 minutes of the game because we, you know, we waited till the media timeout to kind of reset and regather ourselves. So now you have 35 minutes left to play. So yesterday, you know, it was an ebb and flow. Um, and, you know, I think one of the things that, as you alluded to earlier, was how, you know, you guys were down to a ranked opponent last year who was ranked. Nationally, you guys came back and won, right? Mm -hmm. So in this game, it was a lot of ebb and flow. They were up first, and you guys went up, then they went up. Then at halftime, it was tied. You know, they mm -hmm. came out, they jumped out to a double-digit lead going into the fourth, and then you ladies were able to cap it off. You know, mm -hmm. what was, you know, the composure, it, there was never a flinch moment that it appeared to be within the ladies, you know. Right. It, it, it just seemed their composure was not panic. <laughs> right. Um, you know, I have to give them a lot of credit, you know, because, again, I was going to say that before you mentioned the word composure. Everyone kept their composure. Um, we had to play some of our – we had to go deep into our bench yesterday. Um, we had, I think, three or four we, – we were down to five guards because <laughs> we have two injuries. Um, so we had to play all five guards. And, you know, some our freshmen had to go out in the first half while we were down and come in and be able to at least maintain the lead. You know, our leading scorer was in foul trouble. 
Our um, leading rebounder was in foul trouble. <laughs> so, you know, everyone who came in the game, they came in, they did their part. Um, if they were nervous, you couldn't tell. So I have to give the entire team a lot of credit, especially those who are at the end of the bench, because everyone came in and they made huge contributions. And, you know, the most important thing is the, the game stay even. You know, that's a good thing. <laughs> you you want to go up, but as long as it stays, you know, even and we don't go down, then I feel as though, you know, we are in a good space. And yesterday, when you talk about the foul trouble, um, there were two fouls called on your center and uh, your guard, Naya and Anaya. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And definitely was questionable. The one definitely was a block on a young lady <laughs> underneath the basket, as you can yeah. see the screenshots that we yeah. were able to post from last night. <laughs> <laughs> and the one on the, the sideline. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and for you to say that, you know, due to injuries and foul trouble, talk about the trust that the other ladies, for you to have to go that deep into the bench mm -hmm. because of foul trouble, you know, mm -hmm. they never flinched. You know, the young ladies who may not may not have played if there wasn't as much or any foul trouble or, mm -hmm. you know, with Robin then having switch into guard, you know, and bring the ball up. That mm -hmm. was that was a lot of team. That was communication. They yeah. all communicated. But how did that feel to see that, you know, the trust and the, mm -hmm. I'm sure it builds confidence in those mm -hmm. young ladies as well yeah. to yeah. understand that if we ever get in this situation, there's a no flinch, no panic mode. Right, right. You know, um, like it's great for as a coach. That's great. Like we have five games over the next seven days. So we're going to need everyone to play. <laughs> so, you know, yesterday that was a good test to see, you know, you know how they would carry themselves being put in that predicament. Because, you know, it's usually when um, you don't get a lot of playing time and then when you do get in the game is usually when your team is up. So there's no pressure, you know. But they came in, none of them folded. You know, they rebound, they play defense, um, they executed. So, you know, for me, I was excited, but, you know, we prepare for that in practice. So I always tell them, like, if we want to be the best team, it takes everyone on the team, not just the starting five, not the first six, not the first seven. It's everyone. So if you want to be the best and you, I look at it like we're competing at the best in practice. So you're competing at the best point guard, the best two guard, whoever's the, our first five is, you're competing in the best in the country. That's what I tell them. So if you can compete against them in practice, then you can go up against anyone on the court at any given day. So, you know, we just go at each other. Every practice is competitive. No one takes any slack on anyone. And, you know, that's how you prepare for these type of moments. Do you take into consideration CIAA preseason rankings, um, both team-wise and individually? How much energy do you give that? None, <laughs> none really. Um, because I know that the rankings are pretty much based off of last year's performance. You know what I mean? So... I really don't. I really don't pay it too much energy, uh, attention. I really like when they pick us, you know, like seven, eight, or something. <laughs> it hasn't happened in a while, but <laughs> that's where I wanted them to pick us because then it gives us motivation. You know, sometimes with with these student athletes, if you're like one, two, or three, they kind of go into it like, oh, we're already top tier. But no, yeah. I want them to like. Don't forget. Don't worry about that. You need to work to get to number one, number two, number three spot. And I tell them that. I'm like, look, we were – this is where we were picked, but it was nothing that this team did. That was based off of what the team last year did. So what are you going to do this year and where we finish at the end? That's what really counts. So, no, nah, I don't really <laughs> look into it. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, you ladies had a lot of transition points. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. defense was – you know, you had a, quite a few blocks that turned mm -hmm. into you – know, quick, fast transition points. Talk about your defense yesterday. Um, You know, that's something that we pride ourselves on. Like, as for – since I've been at Bowie, that's something that we've always been – we've, like, been a defensive-minded team. Um, And these past three years – so since COVID, it's like, man, our defense was kind of, kind of stagnant. I'm not going to lie. Um, because <laughs> like, we just had more offensive-minded players, right? So, what we've – you know, even with Ana, like, there – she can score the ball. But what we've tried to, well, what we have told her over the years, you know, so what happens when your shot isn't falling? Because, you know, the best the best player in the world has a bad day. So what are you going to do when your shot isn't falling? Something that we can always rely on is our defense. And even when you look at, like, uh, Anna Nye, 
she's increased her steals per game over the past couple of years, and those have led to more points for her. So, you know, someone with like that who wants to score, when they see that, oh, if I get a steal, I can get out, and that's going to, you know, add to my points per game, <laughs> points per game that, right. you know, it encourages her and motivates her to play better defense. But, like, as a team, we just always focus. We want to use our defense to carry us through, and I tell them all the time, that's not about talent. That's all about your energy and your effort. Like, you have to be committed to want to play defense. Um, and, you know, that's something that you just have to be willing to do. So, you know, we pride ourselves on it. And our defense is what, you know, won us that game yesterday. So we did yes. – we scored 23 points, but we held them to seven points in the fourth quarter. So in most of those points that – most of those 23 points were off of steals and out in transitions, or, um, you know, because of the blocks that we made in forced turnovers. So – we pride ourselves on defense, and that's something that we'll work on every day. Um, we still have a lot of work to do within our defense, so I'm looking forward to our defense improving and being 10 times better by the time we get to the end of the season. What was your message to your team going into that third um, – at the end of the third quarter when you guys were down by double digits going into the fourth quarter? What was your message to the team? Um, you know, I just told them, you know, I, I try to stay calm. <laughs> Stay calm, stay calm, because I didn't want to lose my cool and then they panic or anything. So I just told him, like, you know, it's nothing new. You still have 10 minutes to play, and we've been here before. Now you just have to step it up. You have to play the hardest that you've played all day. Um, we have to keep our composure. We have to, you know, get stops on defense. Definitely stop allowing them to drive middle because that was killing us. So we have to eliminate the drives middle. And no second chance shots. So we had to end every possession with a rebound and then get out and transition and try to beat them up the court. Yeah, because in that third quarter, it seemed like um, from in the first half, they were going more inside. So then in the second half, they started to allude more to the outside jump shot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the third quarter, they were hot. Yeah. Um, but then come fourth quarter, you know, it's that you live by the three, you die by the three. Yeah. You know, it was a lot of, you know, basically forced um, shots. I think yeah. they were expecting a carryover from the third quarter where, you know, you your ladies were just calm and, you know, they pushed through. And not only that, you know, then that last minute in like 30 seconds mm -hmm. seemed like it was forever because it was oh. – uh, <laughs> that was the longest minute and 30 seconds that I've ever watched. Yeah, let's not talk about that. <laughs> the longest five seconds ever <laughs> on multiple um, occasions. <laughs> so yeah. when you talk about, you know, and, and when you talk about an eye and you talk about three, do you hit, I'm sure you, because of basketball being close to the audience type of environment, you mm -hmm. hear the chatter in the, in the audience and, the, what folks are saying, or even what the other head coach is saying to his players, I'm um, about three. A lot, mm -hmm. and a lot of it that I hear is that, you know, she's just going to drive. She can't shoot the jumper. But even mm -hmm. though those are the things yelled out, mm -hmm. they still can't stop it. So Right, right, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, with her, like, she might be, yeah, she is probably the hardest working person that I've coached. Like, she's in the gym every day um, before games. Like, we're on the court two hours. She's coming in the morning. Like, she has her own uh, game day routine. After practice, she comes back later to get shots up. So, you know, with her, it's to the point where that stuff doesn't phase her because she knows that she's worked on it. You know, so last year that was a scouting report, right? So she's just going to drive to the basket. So this summer, like, she's dedicated herself to work on her mid her mid range. And it's improved. Um, if you watch the Cal game, like her mid range was on point, you know, they yes. couldn't stop her. So, you know, she, you know, we're just trying to get her to not feed into it. Meaning like, I don't think she lets it frustrate her, but you know, she has a tendency to, you know, say something back. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the funny thing is she has actually worked on because what I would, I would have seen her respond last year Mm -hmm. She don't respond it the way this year. Yeah, so it, yeah. It, she definitely yeah. has progressed that. <laughs> yeah, so she she's been working on that. And you know, she's not a bad kid. She's a great kid, but she's so competitive. She's Absolutely. also competitive, and it's like you know, if someone talks back, like if someone says something to her, she just feels though like she has to respond and then go show you, right? So we're trying to get her like, no, don't respond. Just go show them. You know, just do it. And I mean. 
Like she was amazing <laughs> yesterday in the fourth quarter. Like her defensive intensity, um, just getting out, getting to the free throw line. You know, even with her um, her free throws, like at the beginning of the season, you know, it's improved since the first four and the last four games. Like there's been a big improvement on her free throw percentage. So, you know, telling her that she can't do something is like you know waking up a sleeping giant. Like she's going to commit herself to get better. Um, and it'll come sooner than later, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. When you talk about free throws, and yesterday, you know, there were a couple where we uh, missed on. Do you do you take that to your, as a report to the team? Like these are the points that we left out there when it comes to free throws. Yes, if we don't focus on anything um, after the game, we we definitely talk about like those missed opportunities. So miss miss layups and miss free throws. Like we. We, we talk about that all of the time and then giving up offensive rebounds on the other end. So those are the three things that we hopper on after every game, win, loss, draw, like we're going to talk about, <laughs> we're going to talk about it. Um, because there were, there was one point in the game. Uh, I want to say it was a second quarter and I looked over to my coaches and I like, if we made our free throws and just made two, two um, layups, we would be up five right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it was yeah. a close game. So the first half, we missed a lot of layups. We missed a lot of free throws. So we made the game more, harder. yeah, harder yeah. than it had to harder be. Than it so, had to be. Yeah, we just got to go out and just, like, play for 40 minutes. Like, consistency. That's That's been my word with this team since September. Like, we just have to be consistent every day for four quarters um, or more. However long the game is, we have to be consistent throughout the entire game. Yesterday, you know, uh, your center, Nia, she got in foul trouble a little early again. We mm -hmm. talked about, you know, of course, the one especially bad call on the block mm -hmm. that she gave underneath. The young lady was just off balance in her shot. Yeah. And, you know, the force of Nia's block, you know, didn't help her. <laughs> um, you know, but it's frustrating for a player like her to, you know, be on the – knowing that she's on the bench and there were some questionable calls – you know, mm -hmm. how good of a job you guys have done, you know, just keeping her not from being overly frustrated, yeah. you know, not being able to help her team compete. Yeah. So, you know, for her, um, she's a real mellow kid. So it's, it takes a lot to get her frustrated. Um, <laughs> so, you know, she's I think she's fine as long as, you know, we're moving in an upward direction. You know what I mean? So the beauty of it. Um, you know, we won't we don't want to have her in foul trouble, but the way that Beulah is playing right now, you know, it's not as stressful when she gets in foul trouble because we're pretty much getting the same production off the bench at that position. So I think that has helped a lot. Um, you know, we've talked about it with her for the past two years, and she kinda she kind of knows what to expect at this point. You know, it's at least one per game that she gets where it's it's kind of a questionable call and it causes her to come out of the game. So, you know, it's like when something happens for so long, you kind of get used to it, <laughs> that it doesn't even yeah. bother you anymore. And I think that's where she is with it. But, you know, when she comes out the game, it's not like she's on the game open. She's continuously encouraging her teammates. Um, she's talking on the bench, letting uh, her teammates on the court know where they need to go defensively, where they need to go offensively. So, you know, her – she isn't physically on the court, but, you know, her, her voice is there because she's – She's always talking and encouraging. And we talk about Beulah, it's number 10, correct? Mm hmm Yes. Um, definitely yeah. had, you know, when you talk about rebounds, you mm -hmm. know, her she's her hands up. She makes difficult, she makes it difficult for um shorter guards like Claflin had mm -hmm. to be able to drive easily with an open look. Um, had a couple of great rebounds, and then the one play she had, you know, where she was able to sidestep and get underneath for the layup. You know, definitely provided a spark in addition to number 11, hit a couple threes, mm -hmm. um, number 30. Um, you know, she was her mid game jump shot, you know, was on yesterday. So it looked like it was a collective win, you know, right. given the uh adversity, um, mm -hmm. of foul trouble, you know, yeah. and to rotate and shift, and knowing that you have some players who are also injured who normally would have been able to come off and provide of assistance, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Beulah, uh, number 10 and number 11, they're both sophomores. And, you know, they didn't really play a lot last year. And you wouldn't be able to tell. I think they worked tremendously hard over the offseason, um, the summer, just to 
be a better asset to their team. You know, they aren't worried about scoring points. They just want to know when they come talk to me, it's like, how, what can I do to help the team? It's never about like, how do I score more? It's like, what can I do to help the team? So whether it's playing defense, rebounding, they just want to do whatever it is to help the team to be successful. And I believe that both, the, both of them have done so. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I just keep talking about, I'm, ex I'm just happy for the team yesterday. There was one point people probably don't even know. Like we had, Three post players on the court and two guards. <laughs> no, we had so three and that's when yeah. you was talk. So when you say your post players, are you referring to uh, Bula? Um, because at one point it was Harvin, Robin, Bula, thirty, and mm -hmm. eleven. No, um, I think eleven came out, and no, we had. Oh no, no, no. Yeah, we, that was one point, but then at another point we had. <laughs> Oh, geez. We had Maya Garner, who's a freshman out there. Amaya, number five, who's a freshman. Okay. So both of them are post players. And then I believe um, Beulah was out there with them. So we had them three. Yeah, we had those three <laughs> playing. Oh, actually, you're right. You're yeah, right. The three, four, and a five. And then we had um, I, Robin. Robin was still on the court in, in number 11. So Sion was on the court. So of our starters, we only had Robin on the court. And then, you know, again, Amaya and Maya are both freshmen. So they play here and there, but they, you know, they don't average a lot of minutes. They've played in games, but they don't average a lot of minutes. And then with Sion and Beulah, you know, they're sophomores. And again, they didn't play a lot last year. So, you know, <laughs> we had that group, you know, it was kind of like, oh, what are we going to get? But, you know, I had confidence that they would be fine. You know, I didn't think that they were just going to go out there and just, you know, give the game away. Again, they work extra hard in practice, so I knew that they would be fine. Um, it was just them being comfortable and just having that confidence that they could go out and do it. And they all did a, a tremendous job during that short time that they were on the court together. Absolutely. And I definitely would be remiss if I didn't mm -hmm. stop, you know, Harvin and, and Robin, like I said, because even when Naya, when both Nyas basically, yeah, Naya, Naya was in, in foul trouble. You know, they definitely, as far as leaders from last year, kept the composure, you know, even on plays where, you know, it may have been a, miss, a bad pass or, you know, not such a good shot. You know, mm -hmm. the, the transition, they get back in defense, mm -hmm. um, Arvin in the corner for a three or, you know, Robin just bringing it up. You know, yeah. they definitely were, um, they, they were very valuable, not to say that mm -hmm. they're not the other time, but yesterday, their leadership from last year and their, you know, sense of being able, culpability of being able to keep the game going, and mm -hmm. that beat was huge. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we have a group of players who, like, a positionless players, in my uh, my opinion. Like, Robin played the three for us last year, and this year she's mainly playing the one. You know, we have, like, Amaya, who is um, – our freshman, like she can really play. We'll put her in a two, three, four, five. So, you mm. know, I love the fact that we have players who can play multiple positions, but they're also willing to step up to the challenge and say, okay, so in practice, I'm going to learn every position on offense, on defense, so that I can be an asset to my team. So, um, like this, this, like, I love this group. <laughs> like, I, I love them. Like, they're so, it's such a hardworking group. You know what I mean? Um, like, even on their work, they, I don't want them to see this, but like even even on their worst day, they're in practice or in the game working hard and competing. So, you know, um, I think as, as long as we continue to do so and build and go upward and not take a step back, we'll we'll be, you know, a great team by the time the end of the season comes. Well, Coach, I definitely appreciate you for taking this time with me tonight. You know, like I said, a great victory yesterday. Thank you. Uh, I guess I can say great victory to the Ravens. <laughs> I didn't watch the game, but I saw the last play. <laughs> uh, appreciate it so much. This is the first of many. I'm mm -hmm. Pitts from Pitts and Pitts Sports Talk Radio, Pitts Sports Zone, Bowie TV. Catch you guys later. Next interview is going down. Coach Brooks, it's a BSU total access type of night. Enjoy yourselves.